All right. Welcome back to the final, 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 final. The final fight. The finale. The final everything. Chapter. It's simply called Dead Space. So, you know shit's getting real when the chapter is the title of the game. Oh, yeah. It's spooky, man. And we're with Nicole on the ship right now. She's helping us... um, try to get the fuck out of here ever since Kendra pretty much left us for dead. So I'm sorry, Isaac. I can't let you leave. I'm a cunt. <laughs> so we gotta help Nicole now. We gotta do our own thing. This is the part that it's very difficult once we get inside. You have to move the marker in the to the cargo bay thing so you can like load it on the ship, I think, or something and to take it out of here. To put it, try to put an end to this, so you have to like transport it yourselves. Obviously, I mean, of course, Isaac is called in to do it. I mean, like you know, he just has to do everything. He's been doing everything since chapter one, so you know, pretty much. But uh, yeah, you have to like just move, use it with your kinesis, drag it, and once we get inside and we have to actually move it through each door. That's when it gets really challenging, but I think we actually pull it off here. I'm not sure if we die once during uh, this upcoming part, but I know we did very well. Um, you know, enough to not get stuck. Uh, so, yeah, definitely better than my first playthrough. But, um, yes, yeah, so here we are. Uh, you gotta prepare. I think there's a. I, I actually get shit in here. The bench. Can't wait to play Dead Space on the Wii U. 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 Hey, they got Mass Effect. I mean, you might as well flip, put fucking Dead Space on there. Play two space games. Mm-hmm. EA signs an exclusive deal with Wii U. Release Dead Space right now. Here we go. Here's a store. So I got to stock up here and don't look back because I I know I knew at this point it was coming. So we got a bunch of med kits and we got to sell them. So we definitely just rack up on some fucking ammo if we can. There we go. <laughs> what's uh what's your favorite part in this game like do you have a personal favorite mm. whether it's like scary or it's like enjoyable to like play you know it doesn't really have to be scary it can just be like enjoyable probably the intro like when you're first landing into the Ishimura okay and, like, everybody's just, like, trying to find out what's going on. It's just really, really suspenseful, really foreboding. It's, like, right out of a movie, pretty much. Yeah, like, it feels very cinematic. So it's like, hey, you know, this feels like a movie. I can see that. I, I really like this this whole, like, last chapter, in a sense, because, like, this part's really hard, but I think just, like... The way everything looks outside, uh, you know, in space, and you mm -hmm. know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I'll, you know, you'll see why uh, later on for people who are watching. But Richard knows what I'm talking about. Like, it's just, it's so cool. I just love it. It just has a big epic feel to it. You know, not like too over the top, but it's like the final boss is uh, really badass. Yeah, exactly. I, I love the design and. Uh, that's what I like about the designs, like, they, you know, they could be, like, similar, like, people can make comparisons to, like, maybe, you know, the face huggers and stuff, but it's, like, you know, honestly, a lot of these are, like, really cool because they have, still have, like, human features, you know, they always do, because they were once human, obviously, and the marker and the necromorph outbreak pretty much changed them, um, and I don't know, I, I love the designs, because it's so creepy, there's something kind of disturbing about that, kind of like how you know, Silent Hill did theirs, you know, their, their designs in, like, the first three games, you know? 
It's like there's just something very eerie about that. It's not just like your everyday zombie. It's like a necromorph. It's its own thing. And you're just wondering, like, what the hell kind of part of a human is that mixed with, you know, this? It's, it's it, it reminds me of the thing, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, and the thing as well. Because that's what the thing is. It's like, you mm. know, it's a mixed mash it's of just human a bunch of parts. Shit, yeah. Yeah. Mixed with, like, you know, whatever the hell else that's assimilated. My favorite death scene, one of my favorite death scenes in horror is from the thing. With Riona. The guy's, with the guy's arms. Yeah. <laughs> that's, like, one of my favorites. Because it's just, like, it, it looks so cool. Clear. And <laughs> this ghost. <laughs> just fucking chomps him off. Oh, man. That is uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. Like, I would put Such the, the thing in my top ten because... Right next to Halloween. <laughs> I wouldn't put it right next to Halloween because I do like Nightmare on Elm Street and Scream more. Okay. But, um... I don't know, like, every time the thing is on, like, if I just, like, see it playing, I kind of, like, sit down and just watch it. <laughs> and Doesn't I, matter like, what's going on, yeah. Yeah, I just forget, like forget what I'm doing, I'm just like, okay, let me just watch, like, 10 minutes of this, and then 10 minutes becomes, like, 20 minutes, 20 minutes becomes 30 minutes. It's one of those movies that's, like, really replayable I could see for that, me. yeah. Why? I don't know, but... We all got our movies that does that. Does that. I think I could do, I do that with uh, Scream. I do that with uh, yeah. Elm Street. I do that with... Um... Same, like... I like those movies more, as I just said. So Batman, it, I, I, it happens the same. I see any uh, the dark, uh, the Nolan trilogy. I have to fucking watch it. It's just it's just I have to. Uh, any Back to the Future, the first one especially, but any of them, they're so you know addicting. Um, Rocky, uh, Star Wars for me. Yeah, Star Wars is good. Um, but I'm never. I was never like really true. T- like they're good movies, but I'm not. I don't really consider myself a fan. Um, I I would consider myself a huge fan because I grew up with Star Wars and um, so many memories watching the movies and playing the Battlefront games. Like Star Wars was a huge part of my life when I was a kid. Yeah, I always hold that value definitely. Alien has that that uh rewatchable factor for me like if i see aliens i'm just like okay let me just fucking finish this movie first <laughs> cuz it's just so good mm. yeah there's a lot of movies that i'm probably missing out on uh uh grindhouse is pretty good just cuz i love like the whole concept of that even though it's two movies in one as a whole it's like great um pulp fiction uh, another great one. Um, it's pretty good. I just love the. I just I don't know. I just love that film. Uh, Die Hard. Die Hard. That's yeah. Why, why didn't yeah. I think about that? Right. That that was like that was my childhood movie. That and like Scream, and like you know Nightmare on Elm Street. Like all like those three. It's like a horror mixed up with action. The first one always got to watch it. If I see John McClane crawling through the air duct, I'm like I, I'm watching this. Like I can't look away you know it's like my fucking this is what i grew up with like i agree yeah it's fucking awesome um it's probably i made a like i was thinking of doing a top 30 movie video and it's funny that we're talking about movies now but because i had done this like a couple days ago but i wrote down 30 movies that i really like um i'm not sure about like each movie it's more of a matter of where there aren't 30 movies that I'm, like, you know, absolutely crazy about. It's more like the top 15 I'm really into, and then, like, the bottom 15 are still pretty good, but I don't watch them that often. It's kind of like that. Okay. But there are a lot of good movies on this list. Like, uh, Clerks, that's a movie. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. It's a good movie that, um... The... I, uh... Highly watchable. For me, the Cornetto trilogy as well. Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, World's End. Anytime I see them, I have to watch them. I fucking love those movies. Um, Silver Linings Playbook. Silver Linings Playbook, it's definitely. A great, great fucking movie. Too good of a movie to pass up when it's on. 
There's a movie called Smashed. Um, I'm not sure if it's on American Netflix. I know it's on Canadian. But it stars Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who's my favorite actress. And it's kind of similar to Silver Linings I think you mentioned it to me before. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Like, it has that it has that same, a similar vibe to Silver Linings, where it's like that comedy mixed with drama. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, it's it's more of a positive film, but like it does have like, you know, some sad moments to it. But it's really good. And I've watched it twice on Netflix, and I want to get the Blu-ray. It's an independent film. Okay. So like, it would be cool to kind of like, I don't know, maybe buy it new and support the makers. Definitely. So they can, you know, keep making movies. That's where their income comes from, you know? Yeah. They don't got big studios backing them up, making a profit. It's just like, nope, we're just doing our shit. Yeah. But as you can see, um, it's going on in Dead Space right now. I'm pretty much moving the fucking marker, and a bunch of enemies are coming out, and this is really a bitch just because you gotta watch all angles you gotta fucking watch across the bridge you gotta constantly stop and fucking shoot people oh my god this is fucking a nightmare it literally looks like a nightmare like look at that fucking wall yeah exactly it's fucking it really is your worst nightmare it's like everything you know is coming at you at once and nothing's letting up Especially mm-hmm. at, the, at the, the end of the game, like, they don't give a shit. They were just like, well, what are we going to do to lead up to the boss fight? Well, let's just send a bunch of necromorphs out at them while I use the marker. It's like, yeah. Who the fuck idea was that, man? It's not fair. But... What would you say is your favorite film of all time? Like, your number one movie? Because for me, it's probably Halloween. I... That's the thing. Halloween is is just so far up there, but... Halloween represents... Everything I love about filmmaking. It's funny, because I remember, like, I think a year and a half ago, you never really were into Halloween. I remember you thought they were just, like, not very good. Like, you were just like, eh. Like, they're kind did of Did I the ever same. talk about Halloween before? You, you did, because I was like, you dude, the first one's, like, really good. You were just like, eh, I don't know, I'm just not, like... I remember there was a time where I preferred the remake, because I had watched Halloween once when I was 12. And I was like, ah, this is boring, I don't like this. That, yeah, that was the mentality I think you told me. You're like, no, they're just boring. Nothing happens. I'm like, dude, I think you should really rewatch them. Well, I had, I didn't watch the other ones. Like, I watched one and two. Yeah. And and the remake. Those are the ones I was probably talking about. But as a 12 year old, you know, as a 12 year old kid, there's not much uh, to appreciate there. Like, I think if you show Halloween to a kid growing up today, they're gonna call the movie like, you know trash they're probably going to be like where the fuck are fuck, fuck are the fast cars you know they're going to be like where's the um you know all the action at and i guess that's why i prefer rob zombies halloween because like it was just faster paced at the time and it was just you know um more entertaining for a younger viewer i guess but as an older person I would have to say, and like, you know, after, you know, developing a huge passion for filmmaking over the years, I would have to say that Halloween is one of my most rewatched movies, because it just has everything that I love about filmmaking. Yeah, it's it's a perfect film. It It's a, an, an independent movie, so, you know, there's a lot of creative control going on. Um... It was made by, like, a small cast of people. It wasn't, like, you know, this huge... This huge fucking group of extras, you know, coming on set every day. It's... It was, you know... It was close. Like, everybody knew each other, and everybody was there because they were enjoying... They enjoyed doing it. It was written by the... Or co-written by the director, John Carpenter. And I love a lot of his work, but... He... 
I, I love that feeling of just, you know, when you set, sit down and you write something and you say, I'm going to direct this. Because you're kind of like, I don't know, like, I just like it when a director, like, writes his own work as well as, you know, yeah, actually yeah. directing the feature. Um, it, was, it was very low budget, too. Like, nothing too over the top, nothing that we can't do besides the crane shot at the beginning. Yeah. So, like, I, I feel like, you know, independent, lower-budget movies are more relatable. I feel like if we were to make a movie with our friends, we would d- be doing it not for, you know, getting paid, but obviously because we want to uh, do it for fun, it's something that we want to do. Um, I love writing, and I love, you know, making my own short films, so that's another plus. It's just a really relatable movie, and... I probably love it for, like, you know, slightly different reasons than another person might love it for. And obviously there's the film itself. You know, like, the story is very simplistic. The the um, the vibe is very good. Like, they film that shit in February, but, you know, it takes place during the fall. Like, yeah. you can, even though there are, like, you know, fully green trees in some scenes, they still did their best with, like, you know, pumpkins and the fall leaves. And it does kind of feel like the movie takes place in the autumn. Oh, which it is does, yeah. I don't get favorite. that vibe at all. Yeah. And it's like, like, that it was filmed in like February, like I don't need you know. You feel like it was filmed during autumn. Mm-hmm. And that's one of my favorite time periods of the year. Same. Um, it, it's hard, dude, for me to pick a favorite. I mean, I'd have to, have to say, because Halloween is like really just there, um, like right up there. It was also the Blu-ray that got me into collecting Blu-rays. Like, I, I bought it, I was like, you know, like, I this is just so fucking good, like, you know. I didn't get, you know, I didn't become, like, a huge fan of the movie until, I don't know, August of last year. So there was a time when I didn't really appreciate it, because I had seen it when I was 12, but, you know, being a more experienced not experience, but being, like, you know, someone who's watched a lot more movies and, like, over the years and someone who has a more mature mindset, I can kind of see, you know, the the positives that the, the movie has. Um, I can probably say either A Nightmare on Elm Street or Scream or Halloween. Yeah. I mean, but, like, I'd say, honestly, like, probably, probably A Nightmare on Elm Street just because everything about that is just... It's just great. It's just that's a movie that scared me as a kid. Yeah, I mean, like, why fuck. why does it you know why is it taking over Halloween? Well, just just because maybe because I, I don't know maybe that was the first one that I horror movie that I really remember seeing. I, I saw Halloween at the same age. Um, I used to rent the VHS tapes. Um, yeah, and uh, I remember my dad telling me about the death scene and how they did like Tina's death scene in the movie and stuff. I was like, oh, that's cool, and I don't know, ever since then, like, that really got, like... That was, death scene stuck with me, like... Yeah, like, I was at an age where I was I was getting into Ghostface and Leatherface and Jason and Freddy, and, but, I mean, I don't know, that, it's just something about that first Nightmare on Elm Street movie, I, I recently, we watched it, and I was just like, man, this really is just a great film, I mean, everything about I used how to... it's shot <laughs> and how it fucks with your head, you know, yeah, it's like, great. It, um, it's a movie that I've seen many times as well. And but I hate picking favorites too because Halloween is like perfect too. Like they're all perfect. Like even Die Hard. Like I'd put that up there. Dude, fucking like Halloween, Scream, Nightmare. Yep. Uh, Die Hard. You know, Spider Man Two. Like they're all just amazing movies. Yeah, like they're so. It's really hard to just pick that one. But like if I had to think of the one on top of my head, like Freddy's face just comes up. You know, it's like that's. It's it's movie. it's very hard picking a favorite, and you know sometimes like your mood can change, so like it's it's very hard having like that definitive movie that you can watch at any time over and over again. But like I said, like Halloween is just that that inspiring movie for you know young low budget filmmakers like you and myself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that's it's definitely. Uh... It just shows you, even though the industry is different now, it's like you could still make something that's, you know, just really fucking 
you know, mm. original on your own, you know, without a studio's help. A lot of stories and have been done since, you know, the 70s, but, I mean, there's always original material. Yeah. That could be inspired by shit, you know, it's like, you know, there's nothing wrong with being inspired, just can't blatantly rip it off, but, you know. Well, with being inspired, it's like, it's a sense where you actually feel like making your own work. If I get inspired, it's because, like, you know, something has motivated me. Yeah, exactly. But if I'm ripping off something, you know, that's a completely different thing. Like, you know, inspiring is, or being inspired is when you feel motivated. Ripping off is when you, you know, blatantly copy the, yep. the other work, you know. So, but as for Rob Zombie's Halloween, like, I, I still really like that movie. It's, I think it's a very underrated movie, and it's uh, pretty awesome, actually. Definitely. And it's a great movie to watch during the fall season. I fucking yeah. love, like, both Halloween versions. Like, I love Rob Zombie's version. I love John Carpenter's version. Um, that I just, and uh, fucking uh, Devil's Rejects and House of yeah. the Corpses, they're all good. I wasn't too crazy about House, but Devil's Rejects was very good. I actually liked um, The Lords of Salem, too. I know I know we yeah. get a lot of shit for that, but I liked it. I thought it was okay. Like I, I thought, I, I I thought it was crazy. very it was very uncomfortable to watch. So I was fine watching it. Like I didn't I wasn't particularly disturbed or anything. I was Well it's not like I was disturbed. I mean, maybe that's the wrong way to put it. I just like I felt like, you know, it was a very like odd I, like I can see where, you know like maybe some scenes might make someone feel uncomfortable but you know like the priest scene in the church uh well to me, that that to me wasn't like uncomfortable but i i felt like because like i remember you were telling me like how that scene was just fucked up to you yeah that was it was a fucked up thing but it didn't make you feel uncomfortable i think the, the what i mean uncomfortable in the sense in that and then comparing it to that movie is uh just like the vibe to it the, like it's just very eerie and just very like just weird like there's something off about that film in a good way I mean it goes with the theme but it's like it's just different than his other work I think it's because we're seeing this character that's more like so by herself and I feel like just everything is just like it's like it, feels... it wouldn't happen in real life like none of that would actually happen and if it did holy shit people are fucked up but like it's just like I, I don't know why it's just very different and it's very unique so it's like uncomfortable but not in the sense where like I'm I'm like fidgeting in my seat because I'm just I really need to like yeah no but I mean it's it's just a very I wouldn't mind like weird you feeling. know adding it to the collection one day because I do I do like the majority of Rob Zombie's filmography um the Lords of Salem. It, it felt like a movie where after I was done watching, I was like, okay, like I don't feel the need to rewatch this, you know? But I would like to listen to the commentary of it. I would, and, yeah. And to see, like, because Rob Zombie always does really good commentaries. He loves and, talking. Like, he loves to talk, you know, so. Oh, well, good, because you learn a lot from from uh, what he has to say. Exactly, and, that's what I'm saying. You know, he's... he's, he's he, he knows what he's talking about when he talks about it, too. He so. he has, like, a very, out, like, you know, not outrageous, but, like, a very out there image. Yeah. You know, the whole white trash thing. But I think it's a common misconception that, like, he's dumb. <laughs> like, some people think he's not the smartest fellow. He's and a really smart guy. If you listen to, yeah, like, if you listen to one of his interviews or his commentary tracks or whatever, like... Rob Rob Zombie is a very like he can justify everything he does in his movies and I don't know same with his Halloween 2 movie like I really enjoyed that as well I did too yeah it, he just has like a very a very polarized uh you know reception when it comes to his movies it's like you either love Rob Zombie or you don't but most of the time the people who don't like Rob Zombie just don't like him for the dumbest shit. 
It's like, oh, Michael Myers wasn't a ninja in the remake. It's like, even though there's a fucking scene where, like, he sneaks up on the dad and he takes the mom, you know, hostage in her own house. Yeah. Like, that, you're gonna tell me that's not ninja-like? And that's not even the fucking point. It's like... It's like, why does he need to be a ninja? It's a fucking remake. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's, it's dumb shit. Like, oh, like, there's too much swearing or... Or, like, the violence is too high. Like... Or, or there's a rape scene in the director's cut. These are probably coming from the same people who watch Saul, so... Exactly. Just, well, they're gonna probably be like, well, Saw is good because, like, you know, it's Saw, but when it comes to Halloween, like, I'll it just shouldn't be. Okay. <laughs> torture porn, it's sort of saying torture porn is just good because it's torture porn. But, I mean, this Rob Zombie shit's gotta go. This Rob Zombie shit's gotta go because, like, it's a remake. Oh, God. And what people don't understand is that it's actually one of the better remakes because it's original. It feels original. Like, yeah, he, you know, he paid homage to some scenes. But don't, you would expect that in a remake, wouldn't you? Exactly. It's like, you know, the scene where fucking Tommy catches up with Lori on the street. He's all like, hey, Lori, Lori. Yeah. Lori's like, not now, Tommy, or whatever. And she drops, like, you know, the mail in the house that they're going to sell, which happens to be Michael Myers' house. And that scene was in the original, and people would probably take that and be like, oh, Rob, Rob Zombie's not original. Or when he pins the guy to the wall, it's like, that's yeah. from the original, you know? But it's like, those are just some, like, you know, small scenes that were taken from the original and, like, paid tribute to. But most of the film is its own thing. Oh, hold on, here we go. We got an important part. We are whole again, Isaac. We are whole. Uh oh. So what are we doing to the marker right now exactly? You know, I'm not too sure. We were putting it back into the planet <laughs> just so that it wouldn't Yeah, like we're trying to like pretty much finish it, like leave it there so it doesn't It doesn't fall into our hands. Yeah. Because it would cause too much destruction. My apologies for uh, for this commentary being too much like movies, but that's fine. I mean, this is the finale, so we gotta listen to what she's saying. She just fucking like takes it back. It's like fuck you. She wants to take it for herself. I think she's trying to, like, give it to the company who hired her. Yeah. Isaac, it's me. I wish I could talk to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about everything. I wish I could just talk to someone. It's all falling apart here. I can't believe what's happening. Such a little thing. In the end, it all comes down to this one little thing. I didn't want it to end like this. I really wanted to see you again. Just once. I loved you. I always loved you. <laughs> Finally shows emotion. <laughs> So she killed herself. So pretty much all you've been seeing was dementia. Nicole was just never there. That's what the marker caused. And it gets a little more crazy in the sequels. Yeah. It does. 
Oh yeah, it does. Oh my god. The fucking needle. Just the beginning of the second one is just like a man. It's like the, these events he cannot get out of his head in the second one. To give you an example of what the second one has in store. Yeah. Like he is literally, he's like legitimately like brain dead, pretty much. I mean, not to the point where like he can't do anything. Like he's still like he can actually talk and stuff in the second one, but it's like pretty much like he's scarred up from all these like sh memories now. Because now it's like not only do he lose his girlfriend because she killed herself, like she he has to go through this whole dementia thing that he can't control because he was sent on the ship to try to repair it to try to save his girlfriend and got dementia from the marker in the process. Like it's just not fair. Like Isaac just doesn't not have it fair at all. Like he has to deal with all the shit. He's got to do everything for everybody, and it's just so unappreciated. God damn it! It's so sad. It's okay, Anthony. It's just so sad. Don't cry. Why are you crying? Why do you sound like you're crying? It's okay. I get pissed at games too sometimes, and I cry. You know, some kid's gonna listen to this, and they're, he's gonna be like. That's okay. I cry at video games too sometimes. Yeah. Like, he's gonna, like, actually take this seriously like he did with my fucking Spider-Man album. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he's like, oh, were you crying at, at such and such time? Well, that's okay. Oh, I, did a, I did a Spider-Man LP a couple years ago, and I got really mad during, during a part. And some kid thought I was actually crying. <laughs> and I was just really angry, and Everyone thought it was funny. Because, like, cause that's what it was. It was just funny. And yeah. and this kid didn't get it. He was like, oh, you're, you're crying. I'm like, no. Right, here we go. Our plasma cutter and our rig is pretty much all set. And it's, it's all good. So. Yeah! Fully upgraded, motherfucker! <clears throat> All right, so uh, we're on to the last part, pretty much. I really wanted to see you again, Isaac. Oh, oh. So, like, it makes you think: Did he not play that video because of the like dementia hitting hit him when he was close to the ship? Because he, because like they make it clear, like you're fucked, like no matter what, when you get close to the marker. But it's like. In the beginning, when he was watching it, I've always wondered, like, does that... Did he did he just not watch the rest because, like, something was telling him not to? Or, like... I don't even know. I like this part. Oh, yeah. And, by the way, this is what has been grabbing us throughout the whole game. This is what it's been. And Kendra is fucking dead. Yep. Kendra just got fucked up. Serves her right too, because hey, she wanted the marker back, so she came here. She could have left. And here we go. Awesome looking boss. But he's an annoying motherfucker. She's been bothering us throughout the whole game. But alright, let's do this. How did his tentacles reach into space? Honestly, I don't know. I don't like, know. are you sure that's the same guy? <laughs> yeah. It is. like, there are tentacles, like, grabbing you inside the ship, but he's on the planet. It's just, it's the same guy. I mean, that's what, that's what people have been saying. That's what my friend told me who, you know, got me into this game. He's like, yeah, like, that's him. Because I remember when I would get grabbed, he's like, you'll see what that is at the end. And I'm like, oh, God. How, how did he... That doesn't make sense. They look exactly the same, the tentacles, so... Everything has a tentacle in Dead Space. Well, they look like his. It's like he's been on the planet. This part, kinda, and he can't, he can't hard. fit through the hallways on the Ishimura. This part's really hard with a mouse. I'm just saying, so I miss a lot, but it's very difficult because there's not like it's not really as clear as using a controller. Just this part, nothing else. But. 
This thing seems like... Like, this is the hive mind. It controls the necromorphs. So... But, like, even though it is a necromorph, it feels like an actual animal. Yeah. Rather than just, like... Like, they all feel like animals to a certain point. But yeah. Like this, this one yeah. feels like it's fucking... Like, it's just smarter than everything else. I love this boss fight, though. I like how the environment looks, too. You know? Yeah, it's that's, like that's orange and shit. It just gives it that very, like, epic approach to, to a fight. Pretty much you just keep repeating the process. Dodge the shit and just try to hit him. Like, that's pretty much that. Sorry for the openings. Every boss kind of has that orange spot that you need to shoot. Yeah. I love how this game can incorporate, you know, a lot of elements of action but still keep you focused on the horror. Yeah, I mean, people consider this a straightforward survival horror game, especially the first two. Um, so, I mean, hey, they did something right. I mean, I, the third one definitely had action, but, I mean, there's still survival horror elements. But fans consider, you know, these first two games sort of strict survival horror, like classic, you know, right up their alley. You well, know. Dead Space 2, like, I, people recognize that as more of an action game with a lot of horror in it. According to the fans, like, I mean, from what I've seen, people love to. They think it's more creepier. Well, I... I don't know about that, because from what I've heard, people like, or think this first one is the creepiest, but the second one was, like, you know, critically acclaimed and everything in terms of, like, you know, the fans, but it did feature a lot more action, and then Dead Space 3 kind of kept the same amount of action, but, like, took away a lot of the horror, but it, it still had its creepy moments, though. But I feel like this first game, like, it has a lot of action in it. Like, you know, like, you find your ammo, your your guns, you upgrade it, stuff like that. It's a third-person, over-the-shoulder shooter. Yeah, yeah. But, like, like, you're always focused on the horror atmosphere. Like, you're never, like, you're never saying to yourself, oh, my God, this is too much like an action game. Exactly. And if, like, Capcom wants to go down, like, you know, that action route, but keep it with survival horror. They need to look at this, honestly. Yeah. Look, uh, we're we fucking. What we're getting the fuck out of here? Kill Finally. this motherfucker! Boom, bitch. That was pretty much our detonator. <laughs> I like that when they use like the boss as like a detonator, pretty much. Like, you know, it's like you've been here the whole game. Fuck you. But here we go. So Ishimura is gone. The marker was returned back to where it came from. We see Isaac's face for the first time. Whew. Wasn't Shit. it Brandon who said that this ending was like... You said it was pretty creepy. Was it you or Brandon? Because I remember, I think it was Brandon who said that, and then you were like telling him, Brandon, that's not creepy. <laughs> No, I no, I said it was. It just wasn't as creepy as I thought it would. Or as he was putting it to be. Yeah, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why would it be creepy? Oh. Oh snap! He saw Nicole. I remember you told me where like he was showing you the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star clip. Yeah. He, he was looking at you and he's like so are you scared yet and you're like Brandon the only thing scaring me is you right now yeah yeah it's yeah. like cut it the fuck out it's funny it's it, it's like it's like a survive. it's like somebody who got into a new survival horror game to pretty much like you know 
like to, to to show another person that's a fan of survival horror like the same thing and like try to really like spook them it's like trying to show like a a really old school horror fan like a new movie a new horror movie and to try to get them really scared of it now this game did succeed you know in doing that i mean you know the first time around not not, not this let's play but uh you know but like it wasn't like as scary as some, as he was trying to make it to be like the ending like it surprised me it kind of like you know made me like go whoa but like i wasn't like oh and yeah. brandon played this at a very young age um you know when it came out in 2008 so that's always in the mind of things um and it's we pretty much like he got into horror games and then, yeah like, exactly but we like you going. were already used to that shit Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I mean, so, I've been playing since I was four. Yeah. And we we can keep going too. I know the video stopped, but yeah, you can put like a picture or something. Or yeah, like exactly. Something. Just put something up. But yeah, but, as um, as usual with all your let's plays and you know mine too. Do you want to say anything? Yeah. So um, yeah. This was uh, this was Dead Space. It was very cool. I'm happy I did it in the you know the summer season, which you know I always end up playing Dead Space one. Um, first post commentary with Richard. Uh, what do yeah. you guys think? Leave comments below uh, if you guys for whoever watched. Um, there was a drop off in views with this one, but like I said, I don't care. I'm just gonna keep uploading whatever because I, me and Richard had a lot of lots of fun doing it and showing off another side of survival horror with you guys. This is one of our personal favorites uh, from the collection of just you know awesome games that we have. And, uh, you know, it was just one of the games that I just wanted to do, just like Last of Us, you know, I just wanted to do it. It's, and, and it seems like the games I just end up wanting to do don't end up doing very well as my other Let's Plays. But, I mean, the people who watch it, uh, we appreciate you, you know, for, you know, just watching everything and supporting us and liking and commenting. But uh, the next Let's Play that I am doing is Resident Evil 2 Claire B. Um, I'll probably make an update video um, after this part's posted just to, like, reassure everything and let people know uh, who have been watching this Let's Play, like, hey, I'm doing it, you know. Why don't they watch Let's Play? Beats me. Maybe they just don't like Dead Space. Maybe, you know, they like other Let's Plays that aren't even that good. I don't know. But maybe I'm just being too uh, condescending towards other LPers. But uh not a fan of that. But, um, yeah, I mean... It, it was really fun, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to Resident Evil 2 uh, hopefully coming out late June, early July, just like I planned, you know. Definitely going to record it in June, try to finish it in June, um, but I just have a couple busy weekends coming up, like with Philly Comic Con and uh, heading to Paris for a few days on, on the, that next weekend, so there's a lot of shit going on, but I'll try to see what I can do. Um, it only takes a couple days to finish, I mean, it takes like a day to finish Resident Evil 2 Claire B, and I can edit all the parts in one day, you know, just upload them. Um, but yeah, that that's my next let's play. But I mean, as far as this one, it's my 15th let's play. So on to the 16th one, just going to keep trucking through and enjoying them. But um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. Anything you want to say before we uh, leave here? Um, you know, I never thought like when I found your channel, you know, that four years later, I would be able to record something yeah. with you. So yeah. I, this is pretty cool. Like, I enjoyed doing these parts, and I feel like, you know, right now it may not seem that big of a deal, but I can probably tell you that in, like, two or three years from now, like, me and you are going to look back on this LP, and we're going to be like, hey, you remember when we did this? Yeah, definitely. Oh, and yeah. And we're going to have, like, a lot of fun, you know, re-listening to our commentary and That's stuff. That's what I'm saying. Good memories for sure. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I mean, that never fails, you know? You can have the the shittiest views or the, you know, the shittiest like you know, yeah, streak of views, and it's like it doesn't matter because the memories kind of make up for that, you know. And yeah. I I bet you that like these videos will go up, yeah, over time. Yeah, like yeah. I I highly doubt that three years from now it's still going to be like you know thirty seven views, for example. Um. You know, I, I'm looking at the sidebar right now. For example, chapter eight, seven views. It's like, I doubt it's going to stay seven views for for th the next three or four years. Might not go up like crazy right away, but it should probably like you know slowly burn up. Yeah, as like time goes up on. It's, but it, it's, it's more of like a, a you know a personal thing. Definitely, it's kind of yeah. like like hey, we did this. We had a lot of fun doing it, and 
we might not feel the vibe of it right now, but definitely, yeah. In a few months from now, we'll definitely like this LP will definitely have its like own vibe to it. Oh yeah, they always do. I remember. I think me and you were talking about this a little while ago, like how each one does, and it yeah. never seems that way during it. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, definitely. Like each LP has its own feel to it, and it's a snapshot. It, yeah, it's a snapshot of a certain time period. Yeah, this has been. Uh, when did we start recording? May to June. Yeah. So. It's so been a month. Yeah, we're gonna look at this as kind of like, you know, that spring to summer game that we did. Um, do you feel like you're going to do any more post commentaries or are you going to like mainly stick to live comms? Cause I know RE2 is going to be live com. Yeah, that's going to be live com. Um, I really just don't know. I, th- I think it honestly just depends on what I feel like doing. So it's not, I'm never against anything. It's just like after Resident Evil 2, if I'm like, I want to do another live com or I want to do another, po- it, it's just whatever I feel like doing. But, um, very nice. You know, so, yeah. But I feel like post-commentary should only be done with another person, so it does okay. depend It does depend on the game, because I, I can't be one of these people that, like, does it by myself. I just would not, it would not, I can't bounce anything off of anybody else or start other conversations up. I can't do it, obviously, like, with, with just by myself. So some people do it, and, hey, you know, good for you, I, I but I can't. So uh, it's, it's either got to be live, or if it's post, it's got to be a certain game that... I want to do post in, you know, um, a post in Dino Crisis would be pretty sweet. I don't know. Um, hey, like if you ever, if you ever need someone for a post commentary, you know, I'm always open. Yeah, no, so definitely. That, I, that would I be fun that. to do. Yeah, if you're yeah, ever in the mood. Is cool. And um, siphon filter or anything. Really. Siphon filter. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of shit that um, I got to find out when I'm doing it and what I want to actually do because. It just depends what I feel like doing. You know, Siphon Filter can be um, post and Dino Crisis could be live or vice versa. It's like anything can happen. But, um, yeah, so Resident Evil 2 is next. But other than that, I don't have much planned in the future because I take it, like, you know, a couple of LPs at a time. I don't plan so far ahead. Um, yeah. But it's, but it's not like there isn't going to be a Let's Play in, like, August, for example. I just have to get RE2 out. And then I'll do some filler videos, and then I'll be like, hey, I'm doing this, you know, and then repeat, you know, the process. So, um, yeah. I have shit, like, you know, mapped out in my head, kind of, but, like, I'm, I, I really have stuff fully planned for just, like, a month's head of time, you know, not nothing too, like, you know, oh, we're doing this in the fall, we're doing that, you know, I did the same thing last year. I was like, you know what, I'm doing RE5 in the summer, and I'm gonna have to do this movie that I'm working on, so that's gonna be, I'm gonna be busy editing that, so... Here, just gonna release this in the meantime, and then I did Last of Us in October. It was like that's just, you know, I needed to take you know a little break to edit and promote the movie and stuff, and it's like that shit like that comes up, you know, or just stuff in life comes up. You're busy, you know, it's just it happens. So, um, but uh, you know, I'm gonna keep, you know, just gonna keep this going. So thank you for uh, listening, everybody. Uh, so just stay tuned for more content, Resident Evil content. Um, updates, uh, you know, just just all cool survival horror shit. So, you know, it should be a really cool uh, couple summer months. I'm gonna try to make it, you know, really interesting and cool. Um, you know, so just just make sure you guys stay tuned and stay subscribed and support me any way you can. Uh, just by you know letting me know what you think of things because like your guys' feedback counts and uh, also the podcast. You know, we're always doing the podcast too. So, um, that's always there during the summer if there's anything to talk about. So, um, and if there isn't anything to talk about, if, if we're both in the mood to do something, we'll think of something to talk about. We'll, we'll bring up something, you know, our favorite blah, 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 and this or that, you know, so there's a lot of stuff we can do. Um, just, just stay tuned for everything. Um, so yeah. So thank you guys uh, for watching and, uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. See you guys.